You're special. Don't let anyone limit your potential. You're made for more. Your life is up to you. Exercise more, eat better, make time for yourself, cheer others on, give more, do more. These are just a few of the examples of the messages that we might be told every single day from social media to our friends, maybe even from ourselves. It's exhausting, isn't it? It is. But where is the balance between having goals and being consumed by success? And is there a purpose in living ordinary lives? Well, we're going to talk about all of that coming up on this week's Stephen Bethany's Hopecast. I'm Steve. I'm the Gen Xer. And I'm Bethany. I'm a millennial. We used to do morning radio together. Now we're podcasting. And despite being different life stages, we're passionate about sharing ways to live out our faith in Christ. And we have a lot of fun too. So whether you're old school or new school, you're going to find hope here. Let's get started. All right. Welcome in Hope Dealers. We are glad that you're joining us wherever you are. Thank you for dialing us up again this week. Steve, this is Bethany, and as we get started, we're going to be talking about ordinary life. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> and sometimes that seems so, like, not what we want. Or boring. Or bo- yeah, boring. Yeah, boring. Yeah. It's something that's to be avoided, for sure. Right, but I, I, I got to be completely transparent here. This episode was fully inspired by a post I saw on All Places Instagram, mm-hmm. um, and we'll be sure to link it down below so you can read this little article for yourself, but it was just encouraging to my heart, and basically the, the mindset behind this whole post was that it's okay to live a normal, ordinary life. And and we need to expand on that a little bit because I think, as we mentioned kind of in the open, a lot of the messages that we see on social media or from, you know, books that we see on, in bookstores or, or even conversations just with friends is that we should be able to do it all. We should lead a Bible study. We should start a nonprofit. We should, you know, rescue all of these children around the world. And we and should, the and we should and yeah. rescue the animals. And we should, like, become a incredible chef. And we should have all these life hacks and just kind of be anything and everything and and be able to do all of it all at once that's the message that's pushed yeah I think it's so much pushed not just so much for men but I think mainly for ladies this it seems like it's always focused on you guys yeah I think and and honestly I had a conversation with a friend the other day about this and and she said she's like I'll be I'll be upfront about this. This is a lie from the enemy that you can do it all. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. She was like, when you start thinking that you can do all of these jobs and have all of these things on your plate and be able to, at the same time, you know, have like a free range chicken farm and be able to (laughs) cook healthy meals for your family seven days a week and like be able to just do it all. That's kind of unrealistic. And her mindset behind that was like, we need to be living under the umbrella of where God has us and be fully there and not worry about the pressure from the outside world to have it all together all the time. Um, And that was just encouraging to me because I think that's something that I've fallen into is I just say yes to stuff Mm -hmm. and get myself and do a pickle. Like I just don't say no to people maybe needing my help with something or, hey, could you take on this project? I just kind of do it and don't really think about, do I have space in my life for this? Or do I, you know, is this even what God wants me to do to take on this new project or something? I can just say yes to something and kind of not really think about whether or not it's, it's the best thing. Because in my mind, I think I can, what's one more thing? Mm -hmm. I can handle it. I'm good. Well, and see, I think the pressure comes about it too, because there's so much emphasis on girl power that, that women could do anything. And women not only can do anything, they can do everything. Right. They can do all, all of these things. All at the same things. time. Yeah. <laughs> all at the same time. And yeah. it's almost to the point where it's like, not only can women do it and should do it, but there's something wrong with you if you don't do it all. Yeah, it's like if you admit that you're tired or that you just don't have the capacity to take on one more project or one more thing, you're kind of less than and you're seen as like, oh, you're, are you not goal oriented? Are you mm-hmm. not ambitious? Do you not want to do more? Um, and I think that's something that, that we should kind of focus on is, you know, obviously I think the Lord has, has blessed a lot of different people with a lot of different skills. And so I'll speak for the ladies. I think there's a lot of things that we can do that women are great at, but the pressure of doing all of those things at the same time is where we get into trouble because the the tendency is to just keep saying yes to stuff. And then we spread ourselves thin where we're not doing a good job at anything. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself in this cycle of like, 
I have to, I have to stop. I have to give something up because it's not sustainable. You can't keep that pace, but there's a pressure to keep the pace because you, you feel like, yeah, you're less, less than if you admit that you can't do it all. And, and here's the thing too. So when you start talking about that and taking a step back and saying no to stuff, now all of a sudden you're starting into this ordinary life. Right. And you're starting to think, well, you, you, I'm not doing enough. I'm not fulfilling. I'm not being superwoman. So there must be something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There can't, that can't be what I'm supposed to do or what I need to be doing. Right. Yeah. So has, has your wife ever felt this way? Do you think, have you talked to her about this all the time? And I think a lot of times she feels kind of the opposite. She feels like because she's involved in certain things, but not, you know, the whole girl power really super strong in a lot of areas, you know, doing every single thing. She feels kind of a lot of times like, am I doing enough? Mm. Am I am I somebody that needs to be doing more? I look around at, at other ladies and I see all this stuff, what we're talking about exactly when that open, where you're talking about, you know, cooking the healthy meals and you're talking <laughs> about this and you're talking about raising the kids and having the career and, and being involved with the PTA and everything else that goes along with all of that. My wife looks at it and says, maybe, maybe I, something's wrong with me. Hmm. She, I know she's, she's thought that. And I know she's battled with that thinking that she doesn't measure up because she sees posts like this and, and all, everything in culture talking about it yeah. that, yeah, but Hey, maybe, maybe I'm not doing enough. I think that's where the pendulum kind of swings is like women find themselves in one camp or another. You yeah. know, they're doing way too many things and they don't know how to stop. And they've set the, a pace for themselves. That's not sustainable. And they just can't you know, can't take on anymore, but they keep on taking more mm -hmm. things on because they feel like a pressure to, or kind of like what Jana is experiencing your wife, like feeling, am I not doing enough? All these other ladies have a lot on their plate and they, they seem like they're, they're thriving. They're doing great. Maybe yeah. I should take on more and do more things. Um, and, and I want to get back to this article that kind of sparked this idea to talk about this because this quote from it really stuck out to me. And it said that there is purpose and beauty in living ordinary lives for Christ. That's the part that we need to underline is for Christ. And it got me thinking, it feels like our lives are ordinary or boring sometimes, but the very fact that we get to serve the Lord and the very fact that we get to represent him in our workplace or with our family or with our friends is an incredible opportunity. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. That's kind of mind boggling when you think about it. Like the God of the universe knows me and loves me and sees me. And I get to walk through life every day representing him like that's a privilege. That's yeah. incredible. But our minds don't automatically go there. At least mine doesn't. Mine is like, man, I'm not doing enough or man, I'm doing too much. And it just, I, I kind of flip flop between those two extremes. And here's the thing too, I think happens a lot of times is you, you have so much on your plate or you, or you see everyone having so much on your plate and you think, okay, I'll do all that and I'll uh, make it work somehow. We'll get it all done mm -hmm. and expect to be fulfill, expect to be satisfied with everything going on. But what normally happens when you try to measure it up and you do get all the I's dotted and T's crossed, it still leaves you feeling lacking. So I probably shared this on the podcast before. I would be surprised if I hadn't yet. But um, a couple of years ago, I was to the brim filled with responsibilities and mm -hmm. jobs. I had a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of things going on, a lot of plates to keep spinning. I'll try to find another analogy. <laughs> I had a lot going on in my life. And um, I had been feeling, th so this was in like the fall. I had been feeling stressed pretty much the entire summer. I had just felt really overwhelmed for like four months maybe. But it got to this point in the fall where I remember this so clearly. I was laying in bed one night and I thought I was just running through my to-do list of all the things that I had to do. And I, I think I got an email from somebody that needed help with something. And I, I, you know, kind of mentally added that to my list of to do's and I just started crying. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I can't, it, it was this thing of, I think I had been almost to a breaking point for a few months. And for some reason that one email just did me in. I was like, I can't do one more thing. I just can't. 
And Cody, my husband, was so confused. He had been like in our bathroom brushing his teeth, getting ready for bed, walked in and I'm crying. He's like, what's going on? But I, I just told him, I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I thought that I could do all of these things. And I kept saying yes to stuff. And I just can't. Like, this is the, the struggle I've gotten myself into. I did this to myself. I kept mm-hmm. on saying yes to stuff. And I didn't admit that I need help or I need to say no to stuff and just kind of take a back seat. Um, and, and he looked at me and was like, it's okay. You don't need to do all of those things. Like that's perfectly fine. And he kind of went into, uh, maybe damage control mode of like, well, what can we fix right now? Like you need to go to sleep and you need to rest and you need to just like, we'll talk about this in the morning. Things will look better then. But, um, but we did have a really good conversation where, and I was glad that he was there to have that conversation with me of, okay, what do we need to do to get you into a better spot where you're not feeling as overwhelmed as you have been for months? And I hadn't really shared any of my feelings with him that was on me, but like I hadn't told him how stressed I was. I hadn't told really anybody how stressed I was. I just kept it very internalized Mm -hmm. and was like, I got to keep it together. I got to keep going. And, um, and it really was that, like that one day that it was just a breaking point for me where I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. So thankfully The next couple months, um, I kind of went back and and dropped a couple things and just told people, like, I can't keep doing what I'm doing. I need to take a step away from this for a little bit. And so it did put things into a better place for me um, just in my life and and helped me feel a little bit more balanced. Um, But that was a horrible, horrible place to be. Like, it was awful feeling so overwhelmed. I bet it was. And and that's the thing is, look, there's sometimes in life where we're going to have those times where we're just going to be overwhelmed. But I I remember something you said in a podcast uh, a while ago, said everything has a time limit. Yeah. You know, at some point it's going to end and it'll be okay. It's it's the points where we don't see the end t- line. And that's exactly where you I know? was. I felt like everything was just ongoing. I didn't have, a, you know, for example, if I was a teacher, I didn't think, okay, I have until the end of the school year and then I'll mm-hmm. have a few months and, I, it, you know, life might calm down a little bit. I didn't have that. I felt like I was locked into things kind of forever and right. there wasn't really an expiration date for any of the responsibilities that I had. So I had to create an expiration date well, and just admit like, Hey, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And that's sometimes what you have to do. You have to create that expiration date and say, okay, this is it. I- I'm stopping right here now. And the temptation is, or the thing that'll happen is there'll be a people that comes to you and they'll be like, Hey, well, we need you. Can you do this? Can you do this? And mm-hmm. you have to kind of pump the brakes and have to say no. And you have to realize that, you can't do it all, right? Mm-hmm. But so when you start talking about, it, let's get back to the ordinary life part of it to where, okay, so now what does an ordinary life really look like? And what does that really mean as far as, you know, this whole society that we're living in? Mm. Well, there's three things that stood out to me in this article. So I'll go over the first one. And then after the break, we can talk about the last two. But um, in this article that I read, the first kind of point that they made was that our primary calling is to love the Lord, which sounds kind of Sunday school. I think everybody, if you grew up in church, you probably know that, but um, it it focuses on in on this verse from Matthew 22 that says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment that we should be doing this. That's from Matthew 22 and it's verses uh, 37 through 38. And they, they brought in this quote that said, it's not wrong to have ambition. It just needs to be centered around the right aim. And I think that's really true. I think oftentimes we we just want to go after all of the goals that we have maybe in our mind or that we've talked about with our friends or with our spouse or, or whatever. We just want to um, achieve all of these different things. And we don't have the right layout for those things. Our first and, and most primary goal should be that we love the Lord and that we represent him well. And after that, we can kind of arrange things however. Um, so if we don't, but if we don't have that, that, uh, kind of set up correct, <laughs> mm-hmm. it really gets out of balance. I think those other goals that we might have start to, to overtake our life and we can put the Lord in a back seat or on the back burner and not, not focus on, on him as much as we need to. And as much as we're called to, it really becomes easy for life to just overtake and, and consume our lives. I think that's absolutely true because I have seen that in my own life with, with this podcast. Mm. And I think other people who work in ministry have that happen too. They focus so much on, 
what their calling is and their ambition to see that calling through. Cause look, God does give us these dreams and these goals yeah. and he puts them in our heart and he expect, and I do, I think God does expect us to, to work hard and to, to push towards mm-hmm. those things. But it's exactly what you're saying. It's, is it at the expense of your relationship with him growing in dignity? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm doing, cause the, the uh, idea is I'm growing, I'm, I'm doing to, further the kingdom. I'm doing all of this because I feel the calling, but honestly, is it more selfish ambition? Is it more that? Because if your relationship with God, and I'm saying this to me more Mm -hmm. than I am anybody else, if my relationship with God, is that the first priority? Am I looking to develop that the most? And then as an offshoot, this becomes successful this uh, and, and i'll just this podcast this podcast becomes quote unquote successful and yeah. impacts a lot of people's lives just because i'm doing it for the right reasons it, it can't come to uh at the at the expense of my daily walk with him yeah exactly i think if we look at our lives and think okay yeah my my christian ministry is flourishing or yeah my my job is going really really well but i can't remember the last time i sat down and read god's word or Mm. the last time i went to church or the last time i even prayed you know if you if you are looking at your life and those things you can't even remember maybe the last time you did them i think i i'm not trying to sound harsh because again i've been there like i know (laughs) but i think you need to really reevaluate where you're at and what your priorities are because we're called to be faithful and to love the lord first and foremost everything else is secondary so if that first thing is out of alignment nothing else is going to work long term at least we might have some temporary success and be able to manage it and keep the plate spinning for a little bit but at some point you break down. You can't, you can't do this life without Christ at the center of it. It just doesn't work. That's absolutely right. And we'll get to these other two points coming up here in just a second. But first we want to just take just a moment and say, if you are a business owner, or if you know someone that is, that would be a good fit, you think maybe to partner with us here on Stephen Bethany's Hopecast, we would love to be able to talk to you about that and to see if we can't bring your product or service to our loyal audience, our wider uh, group of people that listen. Yeah, because we kind of are a small business. Uh, You know, we've been doing this podcast for just a little bit now, but we really do have a passion for coming alongside small businesses, really making their name known and and being able to share what you provide as a service and as a business. And so we want to provide that for you. If you're interested in advertising with this podcast, just hit the link down in the show notes. We would love to talk with you. Yeah, and that can look like a million and different, uh, one different things. Um, So, yeah. Click the link. Let's talk. Let's just see what we can work out. It should be a lot of fun uh, because especially if you're a fan of this podcast, we, we've got a lot of loyal listeners, and I think it would be just uh, just a, a nice marriage to be able to to work together. So so let us know. Hit us up on that link down there. So let's, uh, let's continue on now with our uh, look at, uh, I guess the best way to look at this is the, uh, an ordinary life. Yeah, you know? doing, doing life day in day out and being okay with some of the more mundane things in it yeah um the this article that i was able to read that made a second point here that really i thought was great it was just talking about um how sometimes we feel like we're not doing enough where i think your wife has been before i've been that been there before where you feel like everybody else is doing these incredible things to impact the world and we're just not doing enough. And this quote from this article said, you know, I'm not able to solve all the world's problems, but I can fulfill the ministry that the Lord has given me. And I thought that was really profound. Sometimes um, I look at, at girl, you know, I'm 25. So I look at these girls on social media that they started an orphanage when they were 21 and, you know, live in Africa now. And that's amazing. Or Mm -hmm. they started a nonprofit, you know, helping different women with this or, Oh, they're, they've written a book and, and, and maybe more than one book or something like that. And it just feels like, okay, how did they, how did they do that? And maybe how could I do that? I want to make an impact that big, that incredible. Um, and that, that was kind of a a gut check for me because as I was reading through this article and just thinking about my life, um, I think realizing that God hasn't maybe called me to do some of those other things. And they, those girls haven't been called to do what I do. Mm -hmm. I think the Lord places different things on our heart, gives us different talents and, even if our ministry might be just loving on the kids that are around our kitchen table at how, at our house and, you know, being an incredible mom or being a sister and a friend, even if our ministry seems small in our mind, it's really not. 
um, because it's what God's called us to. And so we can be faithful in that and not worry about maybe what other people are called to or what we're not called to. Yeah, I, I think the great thing and the great analogy that's made in the Bible is that it's a race. This mm. life is a race, but not everybody has the same course. We're not racing against one another. In fact, the race is what I love about the Bible is the Bible a lot of times uh, takes everything and has one meaning and we as a society have a completely different meaning. Like mm. when God talks about a race, he's not talking about running the race. He's talking about just walking. You yeah. know, and just <laughs> taking one step in front of the other and just following where he leads. And my race path is going to look different than yours mm. and everybody else's. Now, does that mean that we don't do it? No, of course. We still have to go and do what he's called us to do. But you're right. It may not look exactly the same as someone else's. And that's okay because he designed you with the talents and abilities that he's given you mm. to accomplish your race to be able to run. Whereas we in society, the race is everybody breakneck speed, mm -hmm. look out, get out of my way. I got to get to the finish line. Yeah. Well, that's not the way God does races. And that's not the way God created us to be. I, you know? think, I think too, you know, the, the Bible talks about how we will be known by our love. We'll be known by the fruits that we produce, the, the spiritual fruits that we have. And I think that's something that's really profound is it's not, we won't be known by how many people know our name or we won't be known by how many books we sell if we write a book mm -hmm. or how many different Bible studies we've led in our life. That's not going to be the defining thing. It's going to be more personal than that. It's about the characteristics that we have of a Christ follower and are we reflecting those things to the world. And that puts things in perspective of it's not about the size of your ministry or how many people know who you are or what a big deal you are, but it's are you living out what God has called you to do and are you reflecting him in your life? Um, and, and for me, you know, that's, that's just encouraging for my heart because I think we've, we've probably talked about this before. Like, I've never cared about how many people listen to this podcast or if people know who we are and we get stopped in the street and mobbed by paparazzi. If that ever happens, I'm sure pigs will be flying around too. <laughs> but like, you know, I've never cared about that. But I think ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted, I've had a desire to help people and to, to encourage people. That's been something that's been on my heart. But I, I, I think that um, just what the Lord has been kind of working in my heart and revealing to me is like, it's okay if... I encourage one person in my entire life. Like if that's all that I accomplish, if I encourage one person or impact one person with my love for the Lord, that's perfectly okay. And that's enough. And there's not any um, additional brownie points that I'm going to earn mm -hmm. <laughs> from having, you know, more people be impacted by me. It's not even about me. Like that's super prideful to even think that way. Well, it is. And I got to be honest with you. I wrestle with those thoughts all the time because yeah. I always want to do bigger and more. And if I'm only impacting one person, I'm not doing my job. Yeah. I feel like, and now is that me putting pressure on myself or is it, or is that God doing that? Yeah. Of course it's me. It's, and it is, a, and some of it is pride with mm -hmm. me. I mean, I be upfront and honest, uh, but I'll tell you a great example of what we what we're talking about here is the fact that uh, there's a lady, her name is Lisa Williams and she is an amazing radio talent. Mm. And she works in Christian radio and has for a long time. And she was on, well, I'll just go ahead and name it. She was on K-Love. She yeah. was doing the morning show on K-Love. Now, let me just say, if you're on the morning show with K-Love, you're making a very nice living. And I, that's a big deal. It, it, it's, a, yeah. it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And if you're making uh, a lot of money, I mean, a, a high, high income. If yeah. it, and, and I'm not telling stories out of school. But here's the thing. She was doing that, and she was fulfilling her calling doing what God has called her to do, the, the place that God had placed her and doing such a, a wonderful job and people loved her on the air. She's just a personality that you hear and you're just like, she's just my best friend. Yeah. I just love her. She's super personable and just like has the, the best voice. You feel like you've known her forever when you hear her on yeah, the radio. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You do. But here's the thing. She got to the point where she had uh, problems uh, having babies at, to be in mm. her life with, and she struggled with infertility for a long time and thought motherhood would never be in her 
in her life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she had not one baby, but then two babies. Mm. And it got to the point where even though she has this amazing career, and you talk about an influencer, she was a tremendous influence on a lot of people with this ministry through the radio. But she got to a point where she said, I can't do this anymore. Mm. She stopped and she said, a hundred people can be the morning show host on Caleb, but only one person can be my son's mother. Hmm. And that's what she did. So she, she kind of, so she just kind of quit and gave it all up. Yeah. And I've all, and I've, now look, I, I'm not, this is not a personal friend of mine. I've never really met her. I've talked to her on social media and stuff yeah. before, but, but I just have always been incredibly impressed mm. with that because that's somebody who was at the peak of their career doing ministry for God and doing a wonderful job of reaching people and yeah. helping the ministry and the kingdom grow. And she put the brakes on it and said, this is, this is not what I need to do. Mm. I need to be more with my family. And I think that goes to show too, that, you know, you need to be sensitive to the Holy spirit of what he's calling you to do. And whether you have, a hundred people in front of you or a thousand people in front of you as an audience and as people that you impact or influence. Um, that's incredible. And that's, there's responsibility with that, but there's just as much impact and responsibility that comes with loving on the kids in your home or your spouse or your next door neighbor. Like you can, that's, that's not the, the point of it, the size of you know, the group that you're impacting is not the point. It's, it's really about what you're doing with the time that you have with those people and what you're sharing with them. That's kind of the heart of it. Um, and that goes to into the third part of this article that just talks about how we have a hope in, inter in eternity. Um, and that this, this particular quote stood out to me that we don't have to buy the lie that our life only matters because our name is known or because we have a lot of followers or we do these amazing things. Our life matters because we're made in the image of God. And that is something that isn't talked about enough. We mm. need to shout that from the rooftops that when we are um, really fully and truly aware of the fact that we are loved and known by God, we're made in his image, that gives our life worth and value. And everything else outside of that is kind of secondary. Yeah. And so let's define what image of God means. Now, here in the South, uh, we would say that you're the spitting image. That's what that's the way we <laughs> yeah, would say it here yeah. in the South. So for the example, I'm the spitting image of my dad. Exactly. And his family. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's not to say that we're gods ourselves. Right. But we have God's fingerprints and God's DNA in us. When yeah. when 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 God looks at us or any other, you know, being looks at us, they see, oh, that's that's like a little God. I don't, yeah. And again, I don't mean that we're div divine because certainly we're not. We're meant to be a reflection. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think the greatest uh, analogy of that is like the moon. You mm -hmm. know, the moon reflects the sun. It doesn't have a light source of its own, but you, at nighttime, you can, you can guide yourself on a clear night by just the moonlight yeah. because it's so bright, but it's not doing anything on its own. Mm -hmm. The moon itself is just reflecting what the sun gives to it, you know? And so I think that's an important thing to, to realize is that we are God's reflection mm. and that that's enough. Yeah. And know? it kind of goes back to what we talked about last time about how our identity is found in Christ that, you know, we, we can rest in the fact that we are fully known by, by God. And if we are followers of Christ, you know, we are in his family, we're, we're loved by him. And so we don't have to work ourselves up into a tizzy about, you know, all of the things that we aren't doing or are not doing, or, yeah. you know, feeling just kind of overwhelmed by the responsibilities that we have in life. We can rest knowing we're loved by God. We're made in his image and live out our calling, no matter how quote unquote boring or ordinary it might seem. It's, there's really no such thing. If we're in God's will and we're doing what he's called us to do, that's incredible. And we don't have to feel like we're less than just because we're not doing anything, you know, on a big stage or in front of a huge audience. That's, that's not the main thing. No, that's absolutely true because he has placed us where we are and we're just to flourish and grow right there. Even if nobody really like you in, in our case, nobody listens to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we are still supposed to grow and flourish right, right where we are. And that's, that's what it gets down to. And I think going back to what we said last week too, that I have to continually remind myself of and continually uh, be aware of is 
if I have to verbalize it, if I have to look into a mirror or take my phone and turn the camera on and <laughs> look up. at it and say, look, you are what God's created. Right where you are, right mm-hmm. what you're doing, the person that you are is exactly what God wants you to be. Yeah. And and rest in that. Because so often I think we put those burdens on ourselves. So mm-hmm. if you get anything out of these episodes, especially, and if you haven't listened to the episode we did on identity in Christ from last week, please go back and listen to that. It's yeah, a good they kind com- of dovetail. Yeah, it's a good companion piece to, to this one as well. But an ordinary life is... Okay. Yeah. And more than that is extraordinary. It's not ordinary at all. (laughs) It is something that's really special and really incredible just because of what God has done in our lives. So we want to celebrate that. Absolutely want to celebrate it. And we want to celebrate TJ. We thank him and Blue Stream Media for everything they do for us. Uh, The lights, the camera, the action, everything here. And if you've got an event coming up, TJ would love to be able to partner with you and to come alongside and take care of all the sound, all the video everything church conferences you've got uh, all kinds of things are coming up with springtime Mm -hmm. you know and and thankfully we're seeing a lot of restrictions being lifted yeah so if you've got event planning coming up call blue stream media or go online blustreammedia.com check it out and i'm telling you you'll be able to scratch that off the list of everything (laughs) that that could go wrong everything you've got to plan for at the event taking av off of it is top of the line and he'll he'll have everything working smooth and it'll just go as seamless <laughs> as as you can ever imagine blue stream media i'm serious check it out yeah bluestreammedia.com we also want to remind you to join us on patreon if you haven't yet um we really appreciate all of our patron members and so we invite you to join them tiers are just five dollars to start it's patreon.com slash steve and bethany's hopecast and really it's a community of people that are passionate about the lord that love this podcast and so if this uh hopecast has really encouraged you or inspired you in your faith uh, we would really in, in just invite you to join us on there yeah and if nothing else just check it out yeah. we have some goodies in exchange for support but but bethany's right we have such a little community that has grown together and we pray for one another we send one another emails and we encourage one another so i mean it really has become a little family within Mm. the bigger family here of the audience that's listening so yeah just check it out and just see just click the link down at the bottom and uh see what we've got to offer for Stephen bethany's hopecast on patreon here I think we're about ready to wrap things up, right? I think so, yeah. Follow us on social media. Share us with your friends. We would love to hear about what you thought about this week's episode, so be sure to hit us up on social media. Yeah, and probably the one thing we would ask is to tell your friends. If they are in uh, podcasting at all and you think they would enjoy this, please share this episode. Share us as a a team. Just share, Mm -hmm. share the show. Uh, because it does. It makes a tremendous difference when you just uh, share it with your friends. They get it, and maybe those could be able to pass it on. Word of mouth, always still the best number one form of advertising, for no sure. doubt about it. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you listening no matter where you are in the world because you're all over the place. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Good night, Olive Branch.